Hi, I'm Peter Cooper, and I'm standing here in the Ryman Auditorium, Country Music's Mother Church, and uh, I'm standing in front of the first nudie suit ever worn on stage at the Grand Ole Opry. It wasn't worn by Porter Wagner. Uh, it was worn by uh, Country Music Hall of Famer James Cecil Dickens. You may know him as Little Jimmy Dickens, or as... Willie Nelson, after taxes. For decades, Little Jimmy Dickens has been the Opry's welcoming ambassador, entertaining with hospitality and humor. I went to my doctor last week, and he gave me some of them new pills for men my age. <laughs> and if you don't swallow them quick, you'll get a stiff neck, now you... Now that's how Little Jimmy Dickens entertains on the Opry. But his spot in the Country Music Hall of Fame was not assured by his humor or by his lack of stature. Uh, but through his role as a country music innovator in the 1950s and 60s. Dickens was raised by his grandparents in West Virginia, and he was never far from his radio. Grand Ole Opry was a one night a week celebration at our house. In 1941, he joined T. Texas Tyler on an Indianapolis radio station, and T. Texas started calling him Little Jimmy Dickens. He later went on a growth spurt that threatened to ruin his nickname, but he eventually topped out at four foot eleven. On February 21st, 1948, Jimmy Dickens made his Grand Ole Opry debut. Mr. Acuff brought me here. Uh, I met him first when I was at WLW in 1945. He came to Music Hall and I worked my way down to the alley and waited for his boys to unload and got acquainted with them so I could worm my way backstage, you know. And they took me back and introduced me to Mr. Acuff. And uh, he asked me to do a number on his show, and I said, well, of course. That summer, he was made a member of the Grand Ole Opry, even though he didn't have a single hit. Acuff saw that he could entertain the crowd. In January 1949, Dickens recorded Take an Old Cold Tater and Wait for Columbia Records. Became a top ten hit, as did his second record, Country Boy. About three years we were the number one band in the nation. Then. Yeah. With Grady Martin and Jabbo Arrington playing guitars. And, uh, the twin guitars. We, we kind of uh, set that style with Sleeping at the Foot of the Bed, that song I did. They put it, the twin guitars on that, and after that, well, everything had to have the twin guitars on it. Dickens also dressed the part of the star. I was the first nudie suit on the Grand Ole Opry. That took a lot of nerve, but I took a chance, you know, and it caught on. In 1957, Dickens took a starring role on the touring Philip Morris Country Music Show. With the new gig, he had to leave the Opry, and he didn't return for 19 years. When I left here, I left with the understanding that I could come back any time I wanted to. And, and, and I worked five, six years for the American military, all over the world. During his time away from the Opry, Dickens toured nearly nonstop. His shows featured comedy, recitations, and up-tempo numbers, and he was a master showman. In 1964, he became the first artist to make a complete touring circle of the globe. We were young. I'll put it like that. And I had a, a band where the oldest person in my group must have been 18, 19 years old, you know. Dickens' run on Columbia Records cooled in the 1960s, though he did score a number one hit in 1965 with May the Bird of Paradise Fly Up Your Nose. These days he often announces that he's about to play his latest hit, and then he plays May the Bird of Paradise Fly Up Your Nose, which is technically his latest big hit. He kept touring, but he missed the Grand Ole Opry. In 1975, he rejoined. Uh, Mr. Acuff and Mr. Tubb said, uh, we think that, that you need to come back to the Opry. And I said, I've never been away from the Opry. I've been on tour. <laughs> you know what I mean? For some entertainers, growing older is a hindrance. For little Jimmy Dickens, growing older means new material. I went in to see my doctor the other day, and I said, Doc, I'd like to have you take a look at my left ear. I can't hear a thing out of it. And he took that little old light, and he shined it down in there, and he said, no wonder you can't hear. You've got a suppository in your ear. And I said, thanks, Doc. Now I know what I did with my hearing aid. 
In 1983, Dickens was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. In the 21st century, he has declined to record new music, focusing instead on his role as an Opry ambassador. He usually arrives at the Opry hours before showtime to read his mail, fellowship with other Opry performers, and prepare for his time on stage, which he says still gives him a charge. Every time I go on that stage, it seems like the first time. 